Hey guys, it's Anne over at the Plant Obsessed channel and today I am going to look in on my 55 gallon barrel bin, which we have affectionately named Blue, who is the half brother of the former 55 gallon bin, Big Boy. So let's have a look and see what he is doing right now. So I'm gonna take back the bubble wrap see what we're doing for moisture as usual a couple hangers on but you can see this part here it's looking pretty good but yet not a lot of food but there's still a lot of worms over here so I'm gonna let them do them I'm just gonna fluff them up make sure they get enough oxygen and then we will progress down and you can really see the bands and I did not do this on purpose this is just the way it's working this part here is been mounded up a little bit higher as things get finished I kind of pu push it over here until it gets you know too high and this was um, what I fed probably about a month ago and still you can see bedding and you can also seed the worms but no great concentration you know in any one place but you can see where there's the little transition between the two areas where this is quite quite finished and then this is noticeably I don't know half three quarters of the way done you can still see things like avocado shells color paper that sort of thing. And then we move over to here, which is where I fed last. So if I kind of pull back the, what has become ubiquitous green bags in my videos, and we'll see what we've got here as far as, <clears throat> sorry, um, if there's any worm balls, any undesirable bugs, Looks like just like a bunch of, let's look right here. Still got the full apples. They're molded just a little bit. Nope, is that, that's not an apple. Oh, that's an orange. When things get most, there's the apple. I knew it was somewhere. But that's just like a marshmallow right now. That's totally, the bacteria has done that. The worms have not done that. You can tell there's no worms in there right now but where the worms are is right in here with the coffee and whatever goo that was so kind of looking around gonna put my coffee filters back down put the food back on top of it fill you know put that back on oops wait a minute oh what do we have here we do have kind of a worm ball concentration and these are coffee grounds these are straight up coffee grounds not castings coffee grounds so you know some people will say oh no don't feed them coffee grounds they're too acidic they're too i don't know whatever uh, my particular worms which are red worms blue worms and european night crawlers are totally fine with coffee grounds some people have bad experience but i do not so I can't claim to be the world's expert on these things. A um, little bit of mold there, but that's good. The fungus will eat that, and then they will eat the fungus. It is the circle of life in the compost bin. So still rooting around in here. It, it smells a little musty, but not, I mean, you can see the coffee, is that a banana? I think that's part of a banana peel and there is some mold in there. So if you are sensitive to mold, and I am a little, I make sure that it's really moist in here. If there seems to be powdery mold where it kind of poofs up, uh, I would go and spray it down first before working with it because although it, you know I'm not going to have anaphylactic shock, I will uh, end up with a stuffed nose and maybe a head cold. So I too, do try to you know avoid being exposed to mold. Let's see, here is a 
tamale wrapper. They're, they're working on it. Those take a long time to get done. For some reason, uncooked corn stalks, corn leaves, um, husks, that whole thing, they don't take very long to break down at all. Nice little worm ball of uh, little blue worms there. But once you cook the leaf or the, the husk, you know, pack, pack a lunch or a year's worth of lunches. These things take months and months after they've been boiled. Um, but they do eventually break down, so they can get back to work over there. And I'll just keep moving over moldy oranges. And then right underneath the moldy oranges, right there, good size concentration of little red worms and blue worms. Hi, guys. Oop, another squishy, squishy apple with the mold. And another good size concentration of little worms. So, I'm getting my own light here. Let's see if there's anything else in here. So you can tell I do, I do still have red worms and European night crawlers. Um, at least in my system, you do, I see, I personally see that once I have all of them together, the blue worms do tend to outcompete and I end up with a larger population of blue worms. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, so long as they do their job, I don't care who's doing it. So, um, even though there is quite a bit of food here, I am going to progress the bin down to the next area. So I'm going to put you on the tripod and I will be right back. All right, guys, I've moved around some things here so that we can go here. And I moved some of the bags and looks like the, the worms have decided to move on without me. So nice to see that I have impatient worms because I am an impatient worm mama. So this part here, I'm just gonna leave, cover up with bubble wrap. And then I will add my next feeding Okay, so as you can see, I've got two gallons of the apple goo. That's the last that's in the refrigerator. I'm making progress. So when my husband watches this, he will be super happy. The worms are finally giving us back a couple of our drawers in the refrigerator. So I'm gonna put down a layer of my pre-aged bedding. And then I'm gonna put down some of the apple goo. The fruit flies have calmed down, down here a little bit. Okay. Put another handful of bedding. Uh, if you haven't watched any of my other videos, please go back and look at the blue, which is big boy, it's half brother. I should write it on the wall down here, I swear. So anyway, um, to see the evolution of this bin, go back and watch the other videos that are in this series. So this is gonna be a big feeding, but I really need that drawer back. So this will do them for a couple of weeks maybe even more because it's winter time now here where I'm at in central Illinois. And honestly, they slow down across the board and they're in my basement, which is 65, 70 degrees. Left the window up um, so you can hear the dogs barking in the background. So while I'm down here, they're standing on top of the couch, barking out the windows like ankle biters do. So this is a like a huge feeding, obviously, but they can handle it. Gonna make sure that it's all covered, even though I'm gonna cover it with bubble wrap. I am gonna make sure to do as good as I can 
to make sure that nothing's exposed to where the fruit flies can get in. So that's about two gallons of apple goo and about a half of a cat litter bucket of the... Dogs are liquefying my brain. I can't remember what the hell I was talking about. So pre, pre-aged, there's the words, pre-aged bedding. So that's all covered up like that. Gonna give them some bubble wrap to cover that, which I'm currently stealing from another bin. But it seems to work beautifully. It's been pretty cold around here and the furnace has been nonstop. Luckily it's about 45 today which is probably why people are walking and the dogs are barking at them. So that's it for uh, Blue here, who is Big Boy's half brother. So keep moving on. I'm over the halfway mark. This is the halfway mark. And so <clears throat> hopefully the worms that are over on the far end will start moving over and getting into this and get out of the area that's almost finished so they can have a greater population here to work on. But as we all know, the worms do what they darn well please and I have to deal with it. So if you like this video, give me a muddy thumbs up. Didn't have a whole lot of mud today, but uh, click subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and uh, hit the little bell icon so you know what I'm doing when I'm doing it. And some days you might know before I do. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.